Right, welcome back, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for all the feedback and all the comments I had regarding the last video about why I set this channel up and what it's about. The support I have, as I said, was phenomenal and it, it really means a lot. The prime message, as I put across in the last video, was it's trying to encourage people to have a go. And as I said, the, the response I got back was, was absolutely phenomenal. The amount of people that have come forward and said, yeah, it's I've watched your videos and I thought I can tackle that and I've had a go, which is which is absolutely brilliant. One question I did have, well, actually I had, I had several questions, but so we'll, we'll, we'll cover one question at a time. One question I did have was, what tools would I say you need when you're just starting out on basic basic bit of mechanics really. Again it's a difficult one when you're first starting out, it depends what level of jobs that need to be done. If you're just looking at just a simple plug change, filter change, oil change. I pulled out some tools just to give you an idea. I'll put the prices on the screen as I, as I go through them and where you can get them from. As I said, I buy the best I can afford with the money I have. You know, I would love, obviously, every, I think most people would love, you know, top rank tools, but sometimes it's just, but I found with a lot of the tools I bought, some of them aren't overly expensive. Some people like different brands some people hate brands. It's all down to personal preference and choice. The products that I pick up, like most tools, if you look after them, they, they do last. If you treat them right, they will last. If you mishandle them and treat them badly, then they will break, they will snap. And I know people are going to argue that you only get what you pay for. I quite agree. Um, that's one of one thing that a gentleman said, you know, have there ever been tools that I bought that I regret buying? Yes. <laughs> Remembering them back over the years is, well, I still have part of one. Uh, this was actually a flywheel puller tool. And the bolt that actually goes through the centre to actually, actually just sheared in half and I, I didn't pay a great deal of money for it and I learned the hard way so yeah sometimes if you're going for the more specialized tools it's worth spending that little bit extra regarding this gentleman also asked about more specialist tools I did do a video on that a while ago and after we've done this bit I'll bring that clip of some of it back in to follow up but I've laid a few bits out on the bench just to give people a rough idea. If you're starting out, you're not going to have a great deal of money. You want to try and work on your bike a little. The bits I've pulled out should keep you going. And then, as I say, over years, I'll go back through my toolbox in a, in a bit afterwards as well. You, you just accumulate. So let's start off with some basic bits that I've, that I've had for quite some years on, on most of them. Most of the sockets I use a half inch. You can go three eighths as well, it depends on the jobs that you're doing, but a half inch should carry you in good steed. Right, that is my ratchet. Believe it or not, that is a Halfords ratchet. I've had that probably now 20 years at least and the only problem that went is the screw in the back there's two screws in the front that hold it all together and one in the back that actually snapped so I actually put in an allen and then cut the end off uh, locked tight it was actually uh, thread locked in but 20 years that's been going uh, price wise for that, oh crikey, you could say this is going back 20 years. Uh, 
has as a guest probably 15 20 pounds ish not sure but like I say I use that a lot and 20 years it's lasted me you know it has done really really well but let me show you some bits on the bench like I say some of the stuff just give you a quick pan I've just pulled out a few bits a lot of the stuff I haven't spent a huge amount of money on them I just they get used as you can see that was a set of three believe it or not from Wix and I've had them absolutely years yeah they've been well used but again a good set to have I think they still do them I'll put a price up on the screen already covered the ratchet sockets I have lots I'll show you the rest later I think I showed some of it in the previous video I use this rack practically all the time uh, it's a Sealy Premier range lock on sockets so you can see they've got the extra grooves actually inside comes on the rail again price and price on screen now but they've lasted me I've had these now uh, probably two oh, three four years probably four years or so four or five at least and again I use them predominantly all the time so it goes up from the famous 10 mil up to a 24 mil and again they're half inch uh, available online eBay there's plenty of places where you can get them the other must-have if you're just doing basic simple sort of like plug changes is, is a spark plug socket predominantly again this is a Halfords one I've had it absolutely years 14 mil most spark plugs are 14 mil on most bikes again that's half inch the lock-on sockets are also half inch with a half inch ratchet I do have three eighths and I do have quarter but I say predominantly to start with I'd say half inch is a good size set of spanners I say I've got all sorts I've just pulled out ring spanners again not overly expensive prices on screen start from a 6 mil up to a 22 mil so that will cover you in a great range a must-have feeler gauge so you can gap your spark plugs again I can't even remember where this one came from probably a Halfords I'd imagine had it absolutely years look after it it will last again another Halfords brand again I've had this years uh, oil filter removal tool so it is just basically open it up to the size it does adjust to the size you want clamp and, and turn again price on screen these are optional they're the old star drives but you can get obviously um, the allen key version as well they are handy because obviously they adjust into a socket Hopefully. either go with the star drive or the allen key version if you wish another option I actually again use these a lot 
because you've obviously got the handle they do cost a little bit more but you've obviously got the double end but you've actually got some leverage again that's a draper set again i'll leave a price on screen i mean obviously i do have standard allen keys I do have the star version again available in set these are these are cheaper but for overall use I probably use this set more I say because of the actual handle and they go up from two mil to ten mil right screwdrivers Again, a good start out kit. Uh, again, this is a Segan set done by Sealy. I've had this again a good few years, and it has literally got everything in it. So you've got your socket drive with all your bits in as well, a complete set of 60. And also your very fine small screwdrivers. Every single one gets used in this in this set. I think it did originally have a lid over, but I actually cut it down so it actually fit in my toolbox. But again, used it used it a lot. I look after them, make sure they're cleanish. Yeah, they're not too bad. You probably notice I don't tend to use the stubby ones that often but all the other ones get well used all the tools I I use a lot but like I said as I say the I showed you in the last episode the actual toolbox it has taken a lot of time some of the drawers it please excuse me they're, they're not exactly tidy but again I, I just over the years you pick things up so you you talk it actually starts to grow like i say that's probably the oldest ratchet i've had uh probably closely followed by that one which is a draper again another halfords i literally pick things up as i go sometimes i can't get a ratchet in and i use a small bar so I think that's three eighths. That should be three eighths, and then you can go down to quarter. But say predominantly, I'd stay with either three eighths or half inch. Again, the sockets. That's the set I'd advise. I've I've got on well with them, but a lot of these sockets are quite old. had them again some years I think most of them are probably Halfords ones pick things up as I go and then I start to expand into the bigger every so often depending on what I'm doing I may pick up a socket especially for wheel nuts etc again Literally, so it expands the actual sizes up to. Uh, so we've got a 32. Thirty-six. And a thirty-four. Again, this is primarily my old screwdrivers. So some of these I've had a long time. That was one set I started with, Draper Budget. They've lasted absolutely years. They do, they are starting to go now. Stanley, if they're still around. Obviously, I'll cover these in the clip later on. They're the JIS screwdrivers. Again, that's the screwdriver set I've just showed you. Some wire cutters, etc. 
uh, that's a bit of a junk at the moment but again you don't have to go for the ring spanners the open ended and ring is just as good again these are all different types brands draper uh, I believe that's probably a Halfords had them some of them I've had years but as long as you're sort of going from the 8mm up to about 17 18 mil in spanners that should cover you for most jobs you want to do again that's the ring spanners I showed you I've got different size spanners I've got different their ratchet spanners can be picked up later yeah that's the junk one um, again everything I've, I just keep after over the years that I've picked things up adjustables mold grips you can pick up sets of three always quite handy but if you're just doing primarily sort of like servicing filter plugs then just the basics will do and I say then it just then you start heading into the stuff that I'll show you in a bit your more specialist type tools So I hope that gives you a bit of idea on just basic startup tools. The tool, your tool collection will grow over time, but just to get you started on the basic things, I hope that kind of gives you idea. You don't have to go and buy that particular brand. Again, you're buying whatever you can afford, but try and buy the best you can afford for the money you've got. Right, I'll now run you uh, with specialised tools. I'll run you some clips of that now. Obviously, because I work on, at the moment, working on Z1000s and Z650s, a lot of the older bikes, one thing I did invest in is JIS screwdrivers. This is the set I have. I've left it in its uh, cardboard inner. I got rid of the outer because it fits in my toolbox nicely. But again, it does the job I need it to do. They're not the most expensive. They're probably not the cheapest, but they are a good quality tool. Again, all different sizes of JIS, even down to the small stumpy, but have actually been brilliant for obviously a lot of the screws on the older 70s bikes are JIS and the normal screwdrivers obviously they just can't, can't do it, the, the format's different at the end but again that was a four piece set I'll put a link up on screen now as to where you can get them reasonably priced uh, somewhere around there It's but uh, very very useful right one I've had a lot of questions about and again a lot of people have seen me use it quite often is the actual valve spring compressor So that is actually the kit. The jaw sizes range from 16mm up to 30mm. So on a lot of the ones I use, I'm using the 30mm on one side and the 25mm on the other. But again, depending on what actual bike and what size of valves you're using, this was literally a cheap uh, 10 to 12 pounds I believe this cost me off eBay
I don't use it a great deal. Obviously I used it for the Z650, I've used it for the Z1000 and I used it on the XS750 cylinder head that I, was, that I play around with every so often. Again, fairly easy to actually put together. These just literally slot, it's a ball, ball bearing fixing, I just slot into place. And then the handle goes in. Literally just wind that into position to cut the underside of the valve and then wind that in and compress. And you've got enough room to actually get the collets out, use a little magnet. But a very simple effective tool. All over eBay. Probably not the best quality, but at the moment it does the job I need it to do, so it's it's another tool in the collection. Obviously if you're doing this more often, then obviously you go for a higher quality tool. So at the moment I've used this probably three times. But all fits away very nicely. And easy to store. Right, the next one I use I use this one actually quite a lot. This is the brake piston removal kit. That is the full kit. Ranges again from 19mm up to 30mm. And literally works on a slide hammer variant. Again, let me quickly just uh, Put one together. So that's the biggest size they do, 30 mil. Slides over. Lock that into position. Obviously that fits inside your piston, you clamp that through and it will expand it. And then literally it's the slide hammer action to actually pull that out. Obviously as you're going along you still need to slightly tighten just so it keeps a grip. I say it doesn't cause any damage. I've never had any problems getting uh, caliper pistons out. As I say, this kit only goes up to 30 mil. And as I say, it's the uh, Easily comes apart. And sits nicely in its little kit. For this kit, it is a little bit more expensive. Prices range, I've had a look on the internet, because a 14 piece kit, prices range from 62 to 75 pounds on these. But again, I, I use it quite a lot, I've done quite a lot of, of calipers with this and I'll use it again more in the future, I've got more calipers to do. Right, probably one of the 
latest acquirements was this little tool. Again, another one off eBay, I think it's about £10. Actual uh, cylinder stud removal tool. I used this recently for the first time ever, never used one before. I run a quick clip of using it, but it did the job effectively and helped me remove all the cylinder studs that I needed from the cylinder head. But as I say, available on eBay. That is the tool, fits in with uh, a ratchet. Locks in at the bottom, wherever you stud, whichever size stud you need. But as I say, I'll run a quick clip and then you can have a look of it in use. Using the small hole. I'm going to go in an anti-clockwise to that grips. go start to turn right for the next one this is actually the chain breaker and riveter set I've used this probably five, six times. It's always handy to have have it around. Uh, these have a look again, looked online, these average around 35 to 40 pounds for this particular style. Again, obviously if you're doing more chains, then you'd obviously go up to a better quality, higher strength. Uh, Whale is one, and I believe DID did one as well. I think it was the KM500R. There you're looking into sort of like the 90, 100 pounds plus area. But for what I use it for, as I say, I've probably done five, six chains with this over the course of a couple of years. Again, complete kit. Does actually come with your instructions, and you can actually uh, get other pins. Yeah, so that's actually what you get with it. Shows you the whole kit. Shows you all the parts, and takes you through of how to actually use the kit, how to use it properly. I say, if you don't use it properly, you will damage or break this actual breaker itself, the pins, if they're not used correctly. I say there are various videos, I uh, say I've used it in the past, I don't know if I've got a clip of using it, but there are various videos that I've seen that show you how to use this properly. But again, a very useful tool and another one that uh, sits in my toolbox. Right, next one is one that people have asked me about many, many times. I use this one a lot, the blind bearing puller. Again, it's good for wheel bearings or as I or other blind bearings where you can't get get into. Obviously for wheel bearings you can actually use the bridge. I think it's actually still yep. 
There's actually still one on there at the moment. Again, works in the same fashion as the piston uh, removal tool. Screws in, will open this up, clamps it, and then literally you can wind with the bear with this with this particular tool, you can wind it out and it will pull it. Pull it up for you. I say I have used this many times, done a lot of wheel bearings with it. So you literally work up from starts off with an 8mm. I believe the biggest is 30. Yep, that's the 30mm. I so say you can see I've used that one quite a lot for the bigger size. Again, hefty slide hammer on this one. Obviously, when you're doing this, be careful because I think once I actually caught part of my hand as I was coming up. I had it here and I actually clamped my hand in there and that hurt a lot. Again, fantastic tool. I've used it many, many times. I should have a clip, so I'll roll that now. Again, this is probably one of the most expensive tools I've bought. Uh, these range I've seen from about £160 up to about £180. But a phenomenal piece of kit and it does exactly what I need it to do. I've not seen another variation of this. I mean, there's probably some out there, but absolutely brilliant kit. Um, the code for it is an AK716. Again, I'll leave links in the description of where I where you can get these from. I say some are from eBay, others are from other motorcycle uh, parts places. We Moto, I've used there, I use them as well. But I say, absolutely brilliant. Wouldn't do without that one. Last tool before moving on to, I'll finish off with the parts washer. Last tool is torque wrench. It's 3 8 square drive. Goes from 7 to 112 newton meters. Again, absolutely brilliant. I've used this quite a lot when doing off the uh, Z650. Used it on the Varadero. Again, comes with this nice carry case. You'll see your instructions and etc. Again, seen these ranged in price from sort of mid thirty pounds to mid forty pounds. But as I say, it is three eighths drive, not half inch. So it is worth looking around if obviously if you're looking for half inch drive, but say for the jobs I need, it, it does the job for me. It's 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 really good. Not too much can be said about a torque wrench, most people know how to use one. But say it is obviously fully adjustable, he says. Yeah, there we go. If you can see that, but say like all the marks. So we've got uh, Newton meters on the front and foot pounds on the back. And then it's just lock it in place. Now I've used that one quite a lot. It's just to give you some sort of idea of what tools I use. I say, yes, I use a lot of Sealy tools, 
no, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I am completely independent. These are my only personal views of the tools I actually use. I buy what I need. I buy what I need to do the job that I need it to do. Right, so I hope you found that useful and I hope that answered some of the questions. The other thing I did forget is an oil drip tray. Again, very cheap. And a funnel. I use the actual collapsible rubber funnel. find that very handy, it stores away, it's easy, but any any type of funnel or even um, a plastic bottle, just literally cut a plastic bottle open. Yeah, I mean, something like that is primarily a great idea. It's a, just a plastic bottle, you've had your juice or your water in, literally just cut it off round, that will fit in nicely and you can pour in and that doesn't cost you anything at all. As I say, as regard the tray, they are very cheap, available all over the place. I'll put a price on screen. But you would definitely need that for an oil change. But like I say, I hope that answers the questions that the gentleman gave me. The tools you have, they will it will grow over time. But just a basic starter, I think that should cover you for everything. I don't think I've really missed anything. You should be able to do a spark plug change, oil filter change, air filter change with them tools to take the air box apart obviously it's normally screwed in oil filter you'd obviously need there are different variations of that particular tool there's somewhere like it's got a chain I say there's many versions out there that's the version I've had, I've had it years and it, it does the job but as always, any comments in the comments box below. If I have missed any tools out, then please let me know. I think I've covered most of it. Regarding the specialist tools, that will come, that comes over time as you start getting more and more into it and more confident. But as I say, the biggest tool is your manual for a Haynes or a Climber manual. But that's probably the best layout to start with. It tells you how to do everything as I discussed in the last video. But like I say, if there's anything else anybody wants me to cover or tell you about experiences, I, I try and help where I can. If not, I point you in the right direction. As I've said many times, the tools I have, I'm not backed by any of these people. It's just stuff I buy, Draper, Halford, Sealy. It's whatever I need that does the job that I want it to do. But the main thing is try, if you can look after your tools, they will last. I've got tools in there that are say 20 odd, 20 odd years old and they're still going. But I think that just about wraps it up for today. I I'm still still going on behind the scenes with the Z and the Triumph. Edging closer with the Triumph. But I'll cover that when, when I get back to it. And the same with the Z. There are links to other videos at the end of the video. And as always, appreciate your support. Thanks for watching. Join me again next time. Cheers. Bye.